obviously you can you can leave them uh, you can leave them like that. Dan likes the markers and and he's got vinyl stickers on his that that seem to hold up real well. Um, other alternatives are vinyl sign lettering that you can get from a sign shop, uh, vinyl self adhesive shelf paper, and you can even try monocoat. I, I I've never tried it. You know, trim monocoat or something like that, and iron it on and see what happens. All, you know, the worst could happen, it'll peel off. Maybe even like Zoggy tape, the covering tape that they use for Zoggies, uh, that would work. Um, one thing that, I'll just mention this briefly. Uh, one thing that people, people do with this as far as an adhesive goes, they like to use CA. If you use CA, use a medium type CA, not a thin or a thick. But you have to flash the surface first. Now what that means is you take a propane torch and in the area where you're going to glue it, you run that flame across it. Apparently that burns off whatever compounds are in there and make it susceptible to being glued by CA. That seems like too big a pain to me and I've never tried it. Uh, I always use CA. But uh, this, this uh, piece of my notes here includes a section on how to flash it if, if that's something. Uh, you would want to do, and this this document I added to the I hate to bring this up, but I added it to the <laughs> Google Groups files. So this document is called Spad Tips and Tricks or something like that, uh, and it's it's there on Google. Groups. Any questions? How'd you get those nice neat uh, push rods in there? <laughs> the the push rods are are a problem. Obviously, this one. Everything's exposed. The horns are exposed, and the full length of the rods are exposed. Um, mine are much more poorly done than Dan's, and you can picture that as you fold this over, you have no idea where that push rod's going to exit this wing. So you start out guessing, and you kind of fold it over and peek in there and you see how close you are, and then you make the slot bigger and bigger. Well, Dan does it better. He's got a real neat job there. He did an excellent job. Um, he kind of did the same thing. He marked it and, and, and got the geometry of it and actually measured it and made marks on the inside. And then he eyeballed it too and he took a Dremel tool and a long piece of wire, uh, like with a chisel, chisel point on it, and used that as his drill bit to actually drill in from back here at an angle. And so in this case, uh, these provide a real nice support for the center of that push rod, or mine really don't. Um, but that's how he did his with a piece of wire and a Dremel. How do you how do you hold the rudders on? Dan uses shoe goo and tape. Uh, this one this one was originally held on just with tape. This is shoe gooed and taped to the arrow shaft, and then I just taped it on the bottom, which was insufficient. It would it would flop like this, except even worse than this. And so then I, at the field, of course, I made this handy dandy little stabilizer thing to try and tighten it up. You need a little uh, duct tape. And it, and it works really well. I mean, it, it's, it's <clears> floppy, <throat> but in flight, you don't even notice it. It doesn't. I've never seen it move in flight. When you're getting ready to launch it, it's, it's doing this, but once it gets in the air, it's fine. So shoe goo and tape is, uh, is the answer to that question. These yeah, are just taped on. So shoe goo, if you use something that's very similar, called E6000. E6000. Yeah, and you can buy it at Hobby Lobby with a 40% off coupon if you want. Because it's used in jewelry work a lot. Okay. Uh, but it's, it's really amazing stuff. E6000. How do you know where to balance these things? Um, for these, this is based on a plan that's, that's on the internet, and they give you a starting point. Um, and then you just play with it like any, like any plan, you move it back. Typically, this one, this was just pulled out of you know where. Uh, this is one full size election sign, the kind you see in the yard, and folded it over. This is another sign, folded it over. There's no waste to these. Uh, the elevons are cut out of separate material and just hinged with tape. So I looked on the internet and said, well, okay, it's it's going to be from what they recommend for a for a flying plank. Um, somewhere between 25 and 30% back from the leading edge. And I said, okay, I'll start there. And rather than putting 10 pounds of weight in here, I put the weight out here on the end of this arrow shaft. 
So that's, that's the reason it has this nose, is this is where all my, my nose weight is. Uh, and I put this cover on it so if I accidentally run into Dan, hopefully I won't spear him. This is just a piece of rubber. Um, and then, and then I, I played with it from there. I'd take this off and, take, and it ended up taking out more and more weight until I got it to fly um, the way I wanted. And the test really is, is flight inverted and see how much, how much down you have to give it to get it to fly. Particularly with a symmetrical airfoil. Exactly. Yeah. What's the spar in that one? The spar is these arrow shafts oh, yeah. okay. tucked inside the other. And where can this one, this one doesn't have a spar. This is also a, a design that's on the internet. This was the first one that I did, and it's called a flick. F L I K. Um, I think I think it's usually made out of two millimeter. Is my recollection. Uh, this one, of course, is the four millimeter made out of just. Uh, out of actual signs, election signs. Uh, so it's heavier than it's supposed to be. And it flies well too. The problem with this one is in flight, it likes to do this. It's not really a Dutch roll, it's just kind of a kind of a little wobbly sort of roll. So every once in a while it'll it'll do that and then it'll damp out. But it's a good flying plane too. It's one of the thing that uh, that Dan corrected. You can see how his center joint here is a is a nice good Nice butt joint. Well, if you think about it, if you if you cut these, if you cut these the same size as this, when you fold this over, since it has a big bend to follow that surface, it's not going to mate. It's not going to match up. It's going to leave a gap, like you see here, that's covered with tape. So, if you want to make one like this, a flying wheel, this style, where you fold them over at an angle. Uh, leave this center section a little bigger. And then when you do your final fold over, you can trim it straight and then fold the other one over and then trim it so that they butt. And that's what Dan did with his and what I didn't do with this one. But this one flies well too. It's, uh, the, the tape takes care of that. The tape covers it up, yeah. One, one drawback with this one is when you do crash into the hill, you have to dump the sand out of the wing and open it up and rock it and the ground and stuff. Otherwise, you're adding ballast. It's a blast. It's fun. They, they fly well. They're amazing. Jam a little foam in there, you wouldn't have to worry well, about it. Well, you could. You could cover them up. It's kind of fun. But then then you, you lose the whistle with that. <laughs> it's kind of fun to go up the top of the hill, you know, when you finally get done climbing the hill and you're huffing and puffing. The guys are looking at you and laughing, and you just take that wing and kind of dump on them. <laughs> All right, I'm done. That's great. <laughs> okay, any other uh, shows and tells? I saw a, a two-meter airplane over there. Yeah. Uh, over there.